You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 21. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Today, I want to tell you about a concept that you may have heard about or imagined, but that you may not have thought is possible for normal people or for you. Not that I'm saying that you're not normal. (laughs) This concept produces so much freedom and calm about money and working. And when you think about it, aren't those two of the main stressors in our lives? When we hear about what causes relationship problems, aren't they frequently caused by money and work? And if you asked 100 people on the street, what are you generally worried about? You would get a lot of answers, including health and climate and relationships and family. But wouldn't two of the top answers be work and money? Financial independence is a solution to solve those two top worries, and it solves them by treating the cause and the symptom. You know the analogy of a solution treating just the symptom, for example, an aspirin to cure a headache, but not investigating what's causing the headache? Maybe an underlying medical issue or even just a bad habit. The aspirin won't solve for the cause. But if you investigate what's causing the headache, then you can solve for that. So you can come up with a solution that solves the cause and the symptom, not just the symptom alone. This is what I mean about financial independence being a solution to problems stemming from both work and money. Financial independence solves the symptom of needing to work by solving the cause, which is needing money. So today I want to tell you how financial independence has changed my life. And my goal is, if you weren't already aware of this concept, that you will realize that some people are financially independent. And I really believe if you want this for yourself, it's a possibility for you too. If you listen to one of my very first episodes where I describe the six concepts that changed my life, you heard a brief explanation of what I mean when I say financial independence. And in last week's episode, I introduced you to one of my favorite teachers, Mr. Money Mustache, who is considered the patron saint of financial independence, or FI as it's called for short. To me, financial independence means having enough money to know that I don't need to have a job if I don't want to. It's the independence of knowing my basic needs are already met for the rest of my life without being dependent on an employer. It provides freedom in my lifestyle because it means I can work if I want to, which I do, and I get to choose how many hours I work, what kind of work I do, how long I want to work, and if I want to work for someone else or if I want to work for myself. It means I am not tied to a situation I don't want to be in because I need to collect that specific amount of money every month in order to meet my needs. There's a phrase in the FI or financial independence community called FU money. It basically means if you have this money saved up, you have the option of telling a boss or an employer to F you and just walk out. When I think of that phrase, I think it's kind of crude. To me, it implies some kind of hurt or lashing out. So That phrase doesn't really resonate with me. Instead, when I heard the Ariana Grande song, Thank You Next, in 2018, I really thought that it perfectly described how I feel about my previous jobs. In this song, she describes what she learned from all of her previous relationships. And then she goes on to describe how she's on her own and developing her relationship with herself. And it's so much better. 
The first part of the phrase, thank you, shows gratitude and appreciation for what she got from her relationships. And the second part of the phrase, next, means she's moving on. This is exactly what I want to think about my past career. I had so many relationships with employers that taught me so much and gave me so much and provided so many opportunities for me to learn and grow and experience. And now I want to know that I can be on my own and look for my next thing for me. So I like to refer to financial independence as thank you next money. And speaking of thank you, financial independence provides so much freedom, so many options. And saying no thank you to a job, an employer, a change in your work situation is an option when you're financially independent. But I want to point out here, just because you are financially independent, you don't have to say no thank you or thank you next. Instead, it gives you breathing room to choose and to think that you may not feel like you had if you're relying on and depending on a specific job with a specific direct deposit into your checking account every two weeks. I have felt this for myself and I've heard comments from other followers of the FI movement. It might look like being willing to challenge an idea at work because there's no fear of getting reprimanded or fired for being honest. I've heard of people declining offers, quote unquote, offers <laughs> to increase their workload or hours or projects because they knew they really didn't want to do them and they were able to decline without feeling like they had to agree out of fear that it would negatively impact their job and therefore their livelihood. It's so interesting that the acronym a lot of people in the financial independence community use is FIRE, F-I-R-E. It means financially independent, retire early. And there are documentaries and websites and discussion groups and entire brands built up around FIRE. And as I was just describing the freedom you can feel with financial independence compared to that dependent feeling that you may feel without it, it reminded me that I sometimes hear people talking about their fear of being fired from their current jobs. And I am realizing my thoughts about that are probably totally out of sync with society in general because when I hear that fear expressed, I don't worry with the person. I think to myself, good, let them fire you. Why do you want to work for them anyhow if you're feeling scared in your job and that you won't or don't know how to please them? So that's my description of the what and the why of financial independence. And maybe now I've already piqued your interest a little or renewed your interest if you heard, had heard about this before, but didn't really think that it could apply to you. And as I love to do, Let's do a resistance check to find out if you have any thoughts of fear or threat or scarcity coming up for you right now when I talk about being able to purposely fire yourself from having to work, pun intended. Are you noticing any resistance to anything that I've mentioned? Whatever it is, that is good to know. Those thoughts may be long-held beliefs that you don't need to believe anymore. Let me know if you want to work through them in a coaching session. But back to this episode, I will tell you about my first seeds of awareness about financial independence, and then I want to tell you about ways you can consider this for yourself if you're interested. One of my first FI-related memories that I can recall was during my first semester of college. I was a freshman at Arizona State University, 18 years old, living in an apartment off campus with my older sister. And I wasn't adjusting well to my first major life transition. So during those months, mm, I skipped a lot of classes and I spent a lot of time alone contemplating my life and what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be since it turned out I didn't want to be a college student at that moment. I remember thinking the ideal situation 
would be to own a duplex and live in half of it and rent out the other half and let the rent be my income. And this would be enough because my life would consist of a very simple existence of reading library books on my porch all day. So my expenses would be very low. I hadn't figured out how or when, but I imagined the duplex would be paid off so I wouldn't have a mortgage payment and the rental income would just cover what I needed. So simple, right? I didn't know it at the time, but this is the vision of many followers of financial independence. Another early FI-related memory I can think of from before I even knew what FI was. I was a flight attendant. I was in my 20s. I remember checking in for a trip and meeting one of the flight attendants that I would be working with over the next few days. He was probably 15 to 20 years older than me, and I don't know how we got on the topic, but he ended up describing to me that he and his partner had decided to totally scale back their lives so they could meet some immediate financial goals that they had. And I remembered hearing what he said and what they had decided to do without, like, I don't know, maybe cell phones and eating out, some other things. And right now, of course, it sounds kind of normal to me, but back then, at the time that I heard it from him, it sounded very extreme. And I was like, why would you purposely give up those conveniences and the necessities? And he was like, well, we know what we want, and we know that this will get us what we want, and we can do without those things for now so that we can have the life we want. So that's not a direct quote. Obviously, this was a conversation from 20 years ago, and I can't remember the specifics of what he described to me and what their goal was or even what his name is. I think it's Rick. But I do remember the gist of his explanation. And I have frequently thought about that discussion over the past 20 years. Again, before being introduced to financial independence as a concept and a lifestyle, because Rick and his partner knew what they wanted. They made a plan to get there and they knew the sacrifice wasn't forever and the reward would far outweigh the sacrifice. And they were just doing it with no drama and no victimization, just working and paying off their house and any other debt so they would have the freedom to do whatever they wanted. I am realizing now how much I learned and gained from that 30-minute conversation with someone who was basically a stranger to me. I wonder if Rick even remembers our conversation. Probably not. He was just telling me about his day-to-day, but it made such an impact on me. I used his example a number of times over the years in my own decision-making, and then when I learned about FI as a concept... Oh, it all clicked into place for me. And I recognized that's what those guys were doing. So why does this work? Why is this a thing? And why do people do this? Okay, story time. I got my first credit card when I was a senior in high school. My parents set it up for me through their bank. And I specifically remember the day my dad handed it to me. We were standing in our dining room, and as he passed it to me, he told me something along the lines of, smart people earn interest, dumb people pay interest. At least that's how I paraphrased it in my mind all these years. Even though I did end up testing the truth for myself, both as the smart and as the dumb person, I always remembered that my dad had told me that, and I thought he was so smart to have come up with it. Only recently did I hear a similar quote attributed to Albert Einstein. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't pays it. So am I saying that my dad is as smart as Albert Einstein? Absolutely. Back to the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest. I love that Mr. Money Mustache, who I adoringly described in the last episode, uses the analogy that being in debt is like having your hair on fire. It is the most urgent and important thing to take care of before anything else. So if you are considering any level of financial independence for yourself, I really want to echo Mr. Money Mustache here and encourage you to look at your debt today and figure out how to get rid of it. Mr. Money Mustache also wrote an amazing blog post explaining the simple math 
of achieving financial independence. He basically just gives you a chart of how long it will take you to retire based on how much of your income you can save. And what I love is as soon as your brain believes it is simple and just matter of fact and possible, your brain can also start going to work for you, solving how it is possible for you, unless you have any resistance, in which case your brain will just keep on believing the resistant thoughts and you may never go after what is actually possible for you. For example, maybe one of your resistant thoughts is that you could never walk away from your current job, even if you had money saved, because you make too much money to walk away from it. But let me tell you from personal experience and from seeing other people happily do it, being debt free and financially independent is feeling secure in walking away from a high paying job. For me, financial independence means I do what I do because I want to, not because I have to. It's knowing I will always be fine. Financial independence changed how I decide to spend money on things and clothes. (laughs) When I have a goal in mind for how much I want to save or how much I want to invest, or when I know the timeline for when I want to have a mortgage paid off, it's usually pretty easy for me to decide when I'm faced with an impulse purchase Would I rather spend this $20 on this cute shirt or would I rather put it towards my mortgage? And because I have been thinking this way, that specific question doesn't usually come up for me. I'm usually not really ever faced with that kind of decision making anymore because I've pretty much decided those decisions already. So I usually don't have to reconsider or renegotiate in the moment. And I rarely find myself asking myself that question anymore. The pre-made decision just happens automatically. And now that I'm sharing this with you, I'm wondering, hmm, can I get even more intentional about this? Because like anything, once we stop giving attention to something, it can slip and we can develop other habits unintentionally. So I'm glad we're talking about this right now because now I am going to start thinking about how I can recommit to those pre-made decisions about how I spend or invest my money. What relatively tiny actions and changes can make an impact for you with hardly any interruption in your life? Maybe you already noticed some during our unplanned time out from normal life. For example... I still love a nice meal on a beautiful patio, especially if it's dog-friendly. I love ordering delicious drinks and enjoying an interesting, new-to-me appetizer or salad. But when I evaluated how and when I would sometimes eat out before, and I realized I don't really enjoy chain-style restaurants that give big portions of inconsistent quality food in a cafeteria-like environment, especially when the service or the ambiance isn't great, As soon as I thought about it like that, I dropped any of those eating out habits and experiences. Now, when I can, when I do, will someday, I don't know, go out to eat, it won't be out of convenience or boredom or routine. It will be because I really like a place. There are so many people out there who delight in this lifestyle. You can find communities both in person and online. And if you're interested in this concept or curious about it, I really encourage you to find those communities and wade in to test the waters for yourself. By reading comments in online FI groups and forums, you can get tips and tricks that you can start to experiment with and implement in your own life. You may read an account of how someone else solved a problem that you currently have that you didn't think there there was a workable solution to. And by going to real in-person FI meetup groups, when those happen again, you get to spend time with people who have the same mindset and goals that you do. And don't worry, it's not a full two hours of people just talking about compounding interest and diversifying portfolios. And my experience has not been that most of the people just want to talk about how to live a hyper frugal lifestyle. Although there are some people out there who may be like that. I have met delightful, friendly, interesting people who share some of my same values and who also introduce me to ideas and possibilities I may not have considered on my own. So if you are curious about this concept and you want it or something like it for yourself, 
Think about what first steps seem natural to you. Is it education? Do you want to read books or articles or watch documentaries about how other people are doing this? Or is it action? Do you want to review your own spending and saving for the past six months just to get awareness around what you do spend your money on? Or is it connection? Do you want to find other people who are interested in this lifestyle and read and hear what they're doing and how they're doing it? Or maybe you are curious, but you also have resistance to the concept. You may be noticing some thoughts like, I don't want to change, or maybe I can't change. I don't want to give up or sacrifice, or that would never work for me. I wouldn't be able to, or I don't know how to start. If you do notice these kinds of thoughts, just know it is completely normal and natural for your brain to offer them to you. Your brain wants to conserve energy and keep doing things the way it's currently doing things. Change represents a big expenditure of energy. So naturally, your brain would think, don't change anything. (laughs) Also, the changes I am suggesting can represent a threat to your current pleasure and a possible increase in pain or discomfort. So of course, your brain is going to tell you not to cut the pleasure and increase the pain. That's all just evolutionary thinking. It's so normal. By noticing those thoughts and seeing them for what they are, you can have more decision-making power about if making some changes and pivoting on your goals will have long-term advantages for you. And when you compare the long-term advantages against the short-term advantages, your logical, rational brain might be more interested in investing in the long-term advantages. Working with a coach can help you get awareness around what you're thinking right now, both consciously and subconsciously. So if you are curious about if you could adopt financial independence for yourself and you want someone to talk this through with, someone to help you get awareness around your thinking and your beliefs, let's work together. Book some time with me and I will help you dig into your thoughts. I'll show you what you're currently believing that may not be serving you and that is totally optional. I'll help you figure out what results you do want for yourself financially or in other areas of your life. And then we can work together to help you get those results. You will love the transformation. You will be so proud of yourself. And I am so excited for you. And that's it for this episode. Of course, I want to hear what you think and what your questions are. So send me an email at hi at bexby.org or leave a comment in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash financial. This week, if you're on my email list, I sent you a video with five bonus things that I get from financial independence that I didn't mention in this episode. So go watch that video right now. And if you're not on my email list yet, make sure you join at bexby.org slash favorites so you don't miss the fun extras that I send to all my favorite people. What's on tap for next week, you may be wondering. Oh, it is so good. I'm going to tell you the secret to the universe. Yes, if you thought financial independence was a pretty life-changing secret, wait until you hear what I have to tell you next week. Life-changing, mind-blowing. I cannot wait for you to hear it. And I almost feel guilty making you wait a whole week. But you do have to wait. I will talk to you then. Have a great one. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexb.org to see how we can work together. 